Martin. You've been very scathing uh, in the papers today. The Sun has a big exclusive with you um, the, against the Eubanks father and son. You're very angry that they gave a press conference within a few days while you were still in a coma. Angry that Chris Eubank Jr., having put you in a coma, then goes partying that night rather than perhaps coming to check if you were OK. Tell me why you feel so angry about them. I was just a little bit disappointing because I, I always see it. If, if, I, if Eubank was in that situation and he was in the coma, I would want to go and see Eubank. I wouldn't have. And the whole thing with um, yeah, they wanted to do a press, press conference, my family are begging them not to do it. Um, and they still went ahead and done it. They said that um, they wouldn't talk <coughs> about me. They just talk about Chris Eubank's um, future. Which is we, fair we've seen the video clip from towards the end of the fight where Chris Eubank Sr. Yeah. is seen telling his son stop hitting him in the head. It was taken to mean that he could see what was happening mm -hmm. here. The referee <coughs> was criticised for not jumping in mm -hmm. and that he was genuinely worried for your safety. Was that not a good thing by Chris Eubank Sr.? No, it was, if, if anyone in boxing knows, it's more of a tactical thing. You know, it's more of a tactical thing. Um, he couldn't stop me to the head, so he wanted to hit me into the body to try and get rid of me, you know? Because in boxing, you're in there to try and get so rid of me. So you don't think it was done from any sense of your well-being? No, I don't know, you know? No. We've had um, a response this morning to the article, which is in The Sun, and I think in the article, um, you make a joke about landing a punch on his jaw. I don't think you were joking, were you? <laughs> so if you had one more punch, you put it on his jaw. I can't actually remember saying that, but... <laughs> but would you if you had one more punch? I know. OK, well, let me tell you what the response <clears throat> is to the article. Um, this is from Chris Eubank Sr. Public stroke media pressure was so huge, he felt he had to hold the press conference. It was done with the full knowledge of the boxing border control. Uh, he says, Nick is a wonderful man and gentleman and a great warrior. He's delighted you recovered so well and appear to be back to his old self. He says that if that was a joke, it was typical of his wonderful, charismatic sense of humour. Do you I think feel, there can be response. some rapprochement between you? You know, I've got, you know, he, when he says about he had a lot of pressure to do the press, con the press conference, you know, all he could have done is put a one-liner on it and just said, we've been told by the Blackwell family that we, they don't want us to do a press conference and when he wakes up, then we'll do a press conference. That's all he had to say. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people, I mean, just before we get to Dan, just one final point on this. <clears throat> I, I know Chris Eubank, I've known him a long time. You know, he's always struck me as a pretty <coughs> decent bloke, a bit quirky, a bit eccentric. And I, I, you might be being a bit tough on him, and it may be because of what you've been through, I totally get that. But do, do you feel perhaps that you're looking at it from a very sort of narrow prism of where you were, that actually they were in a difficult position too because yeah. all the attention was on everybody involved with this? Yeah, of course. When I, I woke up and I actually went on social media and I seen Eubank Jr writing to me, I felt rude that I didn't reply to him, but everyone told me what went on, but obviously it went through my one ear and out the other. But when I looked at it, I just responded and how it, yeah, I just said, you know, no hard feelings, you know. Because they're watching this, I'm sure <coughs> they will be. Mm. What message would you give today, given how strong you've been in the paper today, what would you say to, to the two Eubanks if they're watching? You know, I, I haven't got anything against him <coughs> as a fighter, you know, I think he's a really, really good fighter, but as a person, um, some of the things he said and done, personally, I wouldn't have done. Would you like to meet them? Um, you know, we could sit down, you know. Would you like to do that? We could do that, yeah. I hope so. Dan, I know <laughs> you've been involved in boxing as well, but you've yeah. pulled out of fighting as a result of what's happened to your brother. Yeah, well, obviously, being part of, obviously, Nick's family and that, I've got my own family as well. I've got two kids, obviously a girlfriend, um, and <clears throat> I never just, just never want to put them in the same yeah. situation that we as a family were in. So that's why I retired from the How sport. How did you so. feel when you saw what happened to your brother? Yeah, it was horrible. I mean, I I was uh, talking to I was talking to someone as it happened, and then turned around and saw him like let down kind of thing. So, yeah, obviously it was just you know you don't ever expect something like that to happen. Well, look. Thank you both for coming in. You're here. Yeah, you look great. You're alive. Mm -hmm. You're yep. well, mm -hmm. and uh, we wish you all the very best. I hope you I hope you get together with the Eubanks. I don't <laughs> think they're probably quite the villains that I can understand why you've gone where you've gone, but I don't, I don't think they are. No. So. I hope you get together and, and you sort it out. Thank uh, you. But good to see you both. Cheers. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Cheers.